am down in the dumpster room and I posted a uh, Twitter photo of this. It's uh, some coffee machine. I know jack all about coffee. And I <laughs> said I'm not going to touch it. But then people wanted like a teardown. So, okay, um, th yeah, coffee machine thingamabob. Um, it's, you know, conveniently in a shopping trolley. <laughs> all right, teardown time. All right, so people wanted me to look at this thing. Oh, some people did anyway. So it's a coffee machine thing. I have no idea about this. I don't drink coffee, don't like the stuff. Um, it's an acquired taste I never acquired. And I don't know, um, bean type things go in here and it grinds them up and coffee comes out the front. I all I know. Anyway, um, it, apparently it's, yeah, because it's like, it's got to grind stuff up. It's got like motors and stuff. So it could make an interesting, uh, destructive teardown, I'm sure. So yeah, this is not going back together. So for those who want to, uh, think it's sacrilege to destroy a coffee machine, wow, tough luck. We're going to rip it apart. It's probably got like coffee dust and, I don't know. Yeah, dust. Is that what it is? I don't know. I know nothing about coffee. Anyway, let's tear it apart. So here it is. It's a big, a bit of a big beast, and there's no point. Uh, do, if you're wondering why some of my videos are in 4K and some aren't, um, sometimes 4K just isn't warranted. Like this thing, huge thing here. So at 1080p, 60 frames per second, it is. <gasps> it's got a safety tag. Look. Um, <laughs> If you don't know about these uh, safety tags, it's it's legislation here in Australia that, uh, you know, all these mains cords, especially in like businesses, are supposed to have these tags. I'm not sure how well uh, enforced it is, but like the large companies are paranoid about this sort of stuff. And <laughs> we had a guy come around and it was like a couple of bucks per tag or even like $5 a tag to come around. It was like a license to print money. You just plug it into your uh, testing machine, you, you know, press a button, couple of seconds later it spits out a tag you whack it on and <laughs> five bucks thank you very much anyway this is a cafe char <laughs> david over there reckons it's a it's meh and he's a coffee dude i have no idea what this stupid thing here does it, you know it, it squirts froths it up or something i don't <laughs> Shoots hot steam. There you go. David knows he's a barista -y dude. He's like into his, you know, coffee connoisseur. <laughs> I weep for the future. Anyway, it's got to be uh, the, one of the cheapest things ar around. It's just all plasticky, just cheap chinese stuff. It's just like, it's really, the feels like just creepy quality. Am I going to take this crap apart in my lab? Really? Like, uh, what do you people want? I mean, this is just ridiculous. It's going to go everywhere. Like, that's some the hopper mechanism or something. I don't know. It's got no ring on there. Whatever this, uh, and then mates up with this thing up here. I got no clue. Yeah, the finest crust and crud you can get from the dumpster. Terrific stuff. People drink this crap? I presume that that's waste excrement. There's the money shot for you bean aficionados. It smells putrid. Yeah, people drink this rubbish. I figured out there's screws inside the beans. And but I take it off and all the beans fall out. Ah, oh, bloody hell. Okay, I have a bean containment mechanism. May not end well. This is quite funny. There's a connector in there, plugs into this ring. It looks like we have a literal bean counter. <laughs> this, look, a, uh, looks like there's a um, lead under here and a photo tranny on the other side and it, I guess it counts the beans coming through. I did, how does it... I don't, you'd have to look at the mechanism. Does it allow them through one by one? I don't know. Anyway, yeah, that's for bean counting. I think I'm going to have to overexpose the crap out of this, but... It looks like that's our bean grinding mechanism. You see angled walls down in there. Looks pretty robust. And then I, I guess they fall down through there at an angle and then grind against these outer things and then fall through the bottom. I'm presuming. Looks like this whole panel is going to come off. Maybe. And this thing just rotates a couple of notches. It like 
I don't know, sets the threshold of the grind or something. I don't know. Oh, I can start to see some interesting stuff in here. Serial number for those playing along at home. I was going to say, like, 12 to 1400 watts to grind coffee. What is this, a bloody, uh, you know, the juicero of uh, coffee machines? But uh, no, I presume it's got a heater in to make it hotty. There's our mains input. They've gone to a fair bit of effort there. It was a nice clamp on the input. And uh, they've got, like, you know, a proper block for the uh, properly crimped uh, mains con uh, earth connection. And they've even got little wire guides out there for the active and neutral into the terminal block. That's pretty nice. First thing salvage, perfectly good death lead. Ripper. If we take that side lid off, check out inside here. Look at this. This is pretty jazzy. There are uh, input chokes. They're all very nice, you know, you can salvage those, salvage your uh, input caps. It's all, it's all very nice. We've got a whole bunch of mobs down there. One, two, three, four, five. We've got a, there's a PTC over there. Got our bridge rectifier. And, uh, geez, that's quite jazzy. Got some sort of pump thing happening here. Not sure what the deal is there. But once again, you know, you can salvage all those. Okay, so looks what looks like happening, and once again, I don't know the flow of how these things work, so I'm just winging it, so <laughs> bear with me. Um, this uh, box up here, which had this, there you go, this uh, thing here, which looks like it had never been used, um, it is, it looks like it's, what, it holds some sort of liquid, um, because it's got Max on there, and then, so that goes through here, that goes into the tube, over to, uh, is that a, that's not the pump. That looks like the pump up there. This is some sort of regulator, is it? Oh no, a solenoid. Allow the fluid in or whatnot. So, um, and I assume that that's the pump up there and it goes out somewhere else. We'll follow the money there in a minute. Dig Messer brand, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> yeah, know it well. <laughs> Use them all the time. <laughs> Got a bunch of them in my parts bin. Um, yeah, so there you go. Lock yourself out. Is it some sort of sensor? Oh, hang on. I think it actually comes apart. Whoa. Yep. Liquid. <laughs> I assume it's just water. There you go. Um. Yeah. Yeah. No. It's a. Yeah. It. It. It's a sensor. So I assume that. Yeah. That's a flow sensor. There you go. Little O-ring on there. So that's just uh, measuring the flow out of that thing. So that'd just be a little Hall effect sensor and um it just gets the flow that's nice good thing is, is is that you can open that for cleaning i really like that see that could be useful you know if you're into all this sort of you know fluid um type stuff <laughs> i don't know all right david who is a coffee aficionado is going to give us the rundown all right like, look at this mic there's like this is quality i feel like i'm being interviewed this um, is quality mic in here yeah all right, so this is milk or water. Um, if it has an inlet, did you see an inlet for, for water? It may plug into the wall. Oh, okay, no, um, I haven't found it yet. Okay, this could be milk or water. Um, there's gonna be a boiler in here somewhere or some kind of pump. Um, the boiler generally builds up pressure, which is what's used to come out of that, this steam nozzle. Right. So I call it a frother, but um, it's not only for that. So there are lots of different types of pumps in these things. So there are lots of different ways these machines work. One of them is with a thermo block, and that's probably what this is. Um, the other way is we, um, a thermo block is just like a heating element with a pump. Um, uh, and there's also like boiler systems, which basically build up pressure in the form of steam, um, and they use that pressure to pump the the coffee, and they also use it to shoot through the steam nozzle. Um, so I expect we'd see a real tanky heating element and a nice pump in here. Were you a barista at one stage? No, I do have a barista uh, qualification just because I like coffee. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, I don't usually... Th this type of machine is very different to the ones that um, I would use, so I'm not as... So there, I presume this is a real janky plastic rip-off thing. You'd use, like, a nice stainless steel... Made well, in Italy one, wouldn't you, or something? You know, real cap, you know, real... Well, these fully automated ones, they're actually kind of expensive. There's, there's these semi-automated ones, fully automated ones, and then the full manual ones. Um, but these ones, they, they lack whole bunch, like, whole sets of features. Like, they don't have... Um, you, you can't tamp the, the coffee beans into the, the I forget what it's called, uh, thing that you do that. Um, 
which, you know, you don't really have much choice about the type of coffee you're getting out of these ones. It's coming out. No? Don't think so. I think it's just oh. for different coffee sizes. <laughs> Alright, so is a manual one better or are the fully automated ones for... I guess if you've got a dummy working there, you want a fully automated one. But if you've got someone who knows what they're doing, right? Yeah, wanna... it, it's really just for flexibility. Right. Um, the, the fully automated ones usually aren't as refined. Um, right. Yeah. But if you've got a fully manual one and you don't know what the hell you're doing, yeah. I presume you do. Yeah, it's a complete nightmare. Yeah, you get that burnt taste every time. And generally, people like, like pe people don't realize the beans are only meant to be kept for like two months or something. Right. They don't keep very like the really nice ones. They don't keep very well. And these ones, they typically have them in it for a year or something. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know. How many beans do you go through in something like this? Uh, like a normal. I don't know about this kind of thing. I don't know. I've never had a fully automated machine, but um, normal ones, you go through a bag every like month or two two wow, months wow i thought it was like you like you use like I don't know, a quarter of a bag per coffee or something i don't know no 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 uh, um right. you only use um uh, i wish i could remember the grams but i haven't done this for a while so i'm probably getting some things wrong vaguely wrong right but <laughs> but yeah it's only a few grams ah, per, like like right. it's this wow. small little capsule about so this big how do people make money on selling bloody coffee beans then no, no, they because people drink a lot of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> volume, how do you make money? Volume, of yeah. course. Yeah. <laughs> right. But coffee beans aren't aren't cheap. They're they're right. actually reasonably expensive, but they go a long way as well. So like, okay. I, I don't know what the margins are, but got it. The fifty you can pay you can pay fifty to hundred bucks for a bag this big. Wow. Like if you okay. if you're being a bit um, opulent, like <laughs> yeah. All right, we may call on you later once we get further in. <laughs> Let's go. Well, it definitely looks like it had water in it and not milk. So, yeah. Right. What, were they skimping out? I don't know. And for all you pump aficionados, there you go. 70 watts. Jeez, that's more than I would have thought for just pumping a bit of water. And check out that rubber baby buggy bumper compliant mount there. That's really, that's really very nice. And, uh, you know, so like it goes, like it's not rigidly mounted down here or anything. So... That's that's pretty sweet. This thing's actually pretty well made. I'm quite impressed so far. There's other attention to detail in here. Check out just this bit of plastic here that they've got just got it like shielding, not electrically shielding, but physically shielding the transformer just so that all these wires, presumably so that all these wires and tubing um, don't sort of, you know, touch or rub against the metal of the transformer. So that's 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 pretty sweet. And then they've cable tied it all and kept it all in in place. They've, they've really, you know, paid attention to detail here. Base of those nozzles there for those who care. Now we're getting somewhere. <laughs> I think I can get this front panel off now. All right. Off it comes. I've got a... Ah! Oh, they've... They've hot snotted it. Hot snot. <laughs> nice. <laughs> well done. It looks like there's nothing else. They've just got um, the... The front where that, um, the nozzle things which go into your coffee cup, that just looks like it mates up with uh, this rubber baby buggy bumper over here. And that comes from this. It looks like that comes from this outlet. I presume it just goes right angle like that. And that comes out from here, which comes from the mechani this hopper mechanism. That crushed all that. I think I've got that upside down. Have I? Yep. There you go. So, comes out there. Oh, there. Sorry. There you go. It comes out the bottom here. Looks like we've got some filtery thing happening there. And the beans came down here, crushed, and they go through. I've got no idea what this thing here does. Um, I... I <laughs> I don't know. There's another nozzle up near the top here, which goes up in there. I, I don't know. It's too convoluted. I, my brain's exploding. Anyway, all I know is that there's really no sensors or anything inside this thing. It's really, it's really you know, uh, almost entirely mechanical. I haven't really seen any sensors yet as such, apart from, you know, measuring that water flow. So this is our water pump comes out here like this it's all cable tied in place very nicely and it buggers off into the internals in here which we haven't gotten to yet i'm even impressed with like interfaces like this which goes out to the throffer 
thing, whatever it is. Look at that. I mean, you know, they've gone to a lot of effort to uh, sort of, you know, um, engineer that interface. Nice. Aha! This is all going to come off. Ah, oh, boy! Check it out. There's our uh, grinder. Some sort of geared mechanism. I'm sure it wouldn't turn very fast. Some sort of reduction gear. Look, you know, once again, I don't know what I'm talking about. So that is a uh, that is compliant mount. Go a bit, a bit of wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Yeah, there. So yeah, they've they've done well to you know uh, decouple uh, vibrations and stuff in this thing. Yeah, there it is. You can see the rubber mounts down there. Sweet. Oh, coffee's fallen out. Ah, ta-da. There we go. There's our grinder. Got ourselves a probably a decent motor there. I don't know anyone. There you go. For those playing along at home. 12,300 RPM. So here's our outlet here. This goes into this, what looks like a solenoid. So that controls whether or not it flows on the output. And then the water comes out of here. And this is looks like a dual stage heating block. Yeah, water comes in here. <laughs> and then we've got another channel here, which comes from this hose that we saw before. So this comes from our water. So this is our water and I don't know, is it yeah, milk or whatever um, inlet. So it looks like it's got two inlets here and here. And here's where it, uh, and it looks like there's some sort of sensor down in there. That, that would be the heating element there and there. There you go. Yep, you can see the big copper, big copper heating elements going into that thing. So there, yeah, so they're woven through the block. So that's what you see, all these, uh, you know, it's, it's just like any, you know, element-based uh, system in you know, a block, like some, you know, it's just, yeah, it's a heater block. So that's a dual stage heater block. I'm not sure, you know, dual is better, right? Twice as good. But yeah, that's all it does is takes these two inputs here. I don't know how it mixes them, um, but it takes a, the two inputs and then just heats it up and out comes your coffee. Meh. It'd be some timing based system. They wouldn't just mix them together and it comes out. There's probably, you know, they some timing thing related to make a good coffee to mix your, you know, you heat up the uh, your coffee watery thing first and then you add the milk after a certain amount of time, etc, etc. I don't know. If you know the details, post it down below. Check that out. They've actually gone to a, a lot of trouble. That was very solidly like bolted into here. And um, yeah, sure, it's bolted into the plastic, but like, you know, it's it's a really quite a lot of work to go to. Just that, that's the output uh, solenoid. That, uh, you know, and this big beefy mains wires going in there. It's a 230 volt insulation class two, and it just turns it off and on. That's it, just stops the flow of your coffee going out. It, it could regulate the flow too. I don't know, if anyone knows the details of that puppy. Hmm. So, yeah, David tells me that you can actually have different pressures of your coffee coming out. Oh, I did like different flow rates and, oh yeah, there you go. Wow. Okay. That's interesting. So is that just a big ass coil? And then there's something physical happening inside that maybe, you know, maybe the amount of uh, magnetic field you put into there controls the flow, perhaps. I, I would assume that's how that thing works. It's totally unbranded. That would kind of make sense. And, you know, and I assume it's like normally off because you wouldn't want to apply power to this thing all the time just to stop it flowing out. So I assume it's like normally off and then it just regulates it on when it needs to. Um, so, yeah, it probably requires a, quite a bit of power to do that, but that's interesting. And right down in there, you can see a thermocouple. There it is, and they've got one. So there's a thermocouple on this heating block, and there's also a thermocouple down there on this heating block as well, right down there. Oh yeah, Merol heater blocks, know them well. Um, presumably made in China. It's got some Chinese in there. Um, yeah, but there you go. Looks like that's a uh, thermal cutout. 
Um, it's they're just like standard things and all sorts of. Well, I I use one on my solar air heater. Uh, when it gets to a certain temperature, they're just a physical element inside there that uh, just closes or opens the contacts when it reaches a certain temperature. So that's usually like gross overload. Although you can use them for thermal regulation as well, but. Really, yeah, they've got another one on that block over there. So this is your output heater block here. This is your, this goes off to your frother. And so this is your output heater block. And then it comes from this side here. So it looks like it feeds some into here. Like it comes in here and goes into this heater block and comes out here and also feeds part of it over to your output. So, meh, look, I don't know. I... <laughs> Give me a block diagram of operation. So there you go. There's our heater blocks. You can see how the element uh, comes through here. Got a big ass uh, spade lug on there. It just goes through like that. It's just one big resistive uh, element. Same on the back side there. There's your thermocouple sensor tied down to the block. That's rather nice. That's actually tied into the block itself. Goes inside, not actually on the heater. So that's what you want to do to make sure that uh, you're actually sensing uh, the thing that you're trying to heat up rather than your element and looks like what do we got under here they look like um, some sort of thermal thermal fuse are they so that's interesting we've got our thermal mechanical thermal cutout here and these are in series they're in a tube so it's not like that they're you know directly um, sensing so they're, they're two in series with that geez they're serious about their thermal cutout um, that's just, it's just remarkable, the effort they've gone to there. Wow. There you go. Feel free to identify that. 10 amp, 172 degrees. There you go. Is that a thermal fuse? Like, is it a one-off thing? So if it gets over 172 degrees Celsius, it'll, um, it'll blow. Presumably, SF169E. Yep, that's a Limitor brand. I've never heard them before, but yeah, I'm sure they're the duck's guts in uh, a non-resettable thermal fuses. So they've actually put like two of them on this block, which is really interesting. Like just in case one side of the block gets hotter than the other first, I, they've gone to a lot of effort. Three protection devices. Of course, these are resettable. These are non-resettable. So Wow, and they even went to the effort to put the thermal compound on there. Nice. And then in here we have well, what I'll probably call the hopper motor because it, it drives this thing here. So there you go, that mates up to that down there and it, it does whatever that thing does. Yeah, <laughs> I guess it selects how well it grinds the, oh, how well it grinds the coffee anyway. That's, that's a big block, isn't it? Wow, and they've got that uh, mains earthed as well. Just easier to cut those. Jeez, I like the insulation on that. Wow, that insulation is like, it's like rubber. Sorry this isn't feel of, oh look, there you go. Look at that. Wow. If anyone knows the name for that type of insulation, I, I've seen it, I've probably seen it before, but geez. It's a form of woven insulation, but it feels, it feels like very rubbery rather than, you know, like cottony or anything like that. But yeah, certainly a woven wrap with maybe an inner rubber core or something. Neat. Okay, so we have a motor inside there. You can see that was dry. So this is just going to be a big gear reduction thing. I've got a limit. Well, a uh, activation switch which uh, tells you that you've uh, plugged in that um, hopper thingy mechanism correctly. And um, then it looks like it just it controls a, another uh, pumpy, tubey thing up there. Oops, I just realized I still have my macro lens on for that. Um, anyway, um, let's lift this and hello. Yeah, there's our reduction gear and reduction thing on but yeah you can see how i don't know count the number of turns that it requires to what the reduction ratio is and it looks like it just alternates um some limit switches up here so i guess it that probably controls the direction of the hopper 
or something like that. Maybe it, it goes back and forth or something like that. So that's a mechanical solution, perhaps, because you already got to drive the motor anyway, I guess. But that's maybe some sort of... Or, or does it, it simply reverse the motor? Does it just go... Nah, 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 like, I, <laughs> I don't know. And the pick microchip fanboys go wild. There you go. What is that? An 18F4620. <laughs> Big 40 pin dip package. Thank you very much. And just got some 74 series logic. It's very like old school through hole. I really like it. And of course, there's a very nice bunch of uh, uh, opto couplers down here with nice isolation slots down between them. And they've all uh, silk screen designated all the mains section of that it's all very nice and isolation slots between each of the pins of the bridge a rectifier brilliant stuff so that's all oh, there's actually two fuses on there and uh I, these are just flapping around in the breeze and uh, i'm not a, oh, a fan of that oh it's a uh it's a staggered leg arrangement there so it's, it has better stability than just the uh horizontal one there and got a couple of switching trannies on the heatsink there coffee and steam or stem um there you go so they're uh, like the main side going out to the uh, uh the coffee heater and the steam heaters presumably and the rest of it's all just you know all just digitally uh digital control this just goes off to the front panel which has like an lcd and other uh miscellaneous stuff on it so there's you know there's not really much in there at all and they call it the core motor and core TC out. Uh, the grinder motor here. Uh, Megnet. What's Megnet? Pump and work TC in. They're the internal names that they uh, give these things. So, But apart from that, uh, signal ground work TC out. Big ass relay on there. And that's a decent layout. Don't mind that at all. So what parts can you salvage out of something like this? Well, of course, you've got the uh, motor up here. You might want to <laughs> reuse the grinder mechanism for something. Who knows? Uh, these boards are very nice to keep because, you know, you've got um, like large mains filter caps, uh, big common mode chokes. You've got like big, big ass uh, bridge rectifiers. You've got uh, varistas. You've got a relay on there, the opto couplers, you can uh, salvage those very nice. Little, you know, heat sinks and other um, stuff you can get off there. So, you know, boards like that are well worth, it's well worth having a, just a junk box full of like scrap boards and things like that. Very handy. Uh, you know, you get little transformers. We've got the thermal uh, fuses, the thermal cutouts and stuff like that. We've got the big ass um, the pump, the water pump up there and things like that. So, you know. There's a few neat little things you can salvage out of this. Well, there you go. Everyone had better damn well have uh, liked that video because my lab now smells like bloody coffee. So I think it's a mandatory thumbs up for me making the sacrifice to do that. And uh, as always, you can discuss it down below. And if you've got more details on how these coffee th things work, by all means, um, yeah. As I said, leave it down below. And as always, you can support me on Patreon, although I have lost quite a few uh, patrons recently with the complete uh, debacle that is the Sargon uh, thing. Patreon keep doing this sort of crap and people keep leaving Patreon. I can't necessarily blame them, but I'm, I'm still on there and I'm still, uh, you know, <laughs> thank you very much to my patrons who often get to uh, see the videos early and stuff. And you can support me uh, other ways, uh, PayPal donations, I've got a donate page on the uh, website, always linked in down below, set crypto and all that sort of stuff, or, or buy some of the merch I'm flogging. Catch you next time. Hello.